This is a rain catchment system that my daughter and I just built and I'm very excited about it. I think it's probably the best design that I have used or have seen. So let's take a closer look at the design. First of all, what we did is we leveled it and we put one by sixes underneath both of the bottom totes. That way they stay even. And the one by six distributes the weight so we don't have any settling down into the ground. Here between the totes on the top and the bottom, we have a treated two by four and we have hose straps on here holding this together. This is rock solid and joins these solidly together. The tricky part about this whole thing is not having any leaks. Fortunately, that's easy to avoid. And that is because of O-rings. You can see inside of this lid here, we have an O-ring that comes with the lid. And that will seal down this right here so it will not leak. Don't need to put any extra marine goop or anything like that in there, unless you want, but uh, we haven't found that it's necessary. And then we take another O-ring, we found this at the hardware store, and we put it on the pipe that goes right into here. And we'll just go ahead and screw that on. I'll put a little um, Vaseline on there or a bar of soap to help make it easy to screw on. I'll tighten it down and it'll be good to go. It'll be watertight. Okay, what we've done here is we've added the 2x4 treated lumber. I don't know if it really needs to be treated, but that's what we used. It's an 8 foot piece that goes on the edges. That lifts up this top tote up a little bit so that we can get the piping in here. So as you can see here, we're filling from the top, which is going to allow the air to go out as the water goes in. So we've, we started from here and made all the connections. This is a four and a half inch piece pipe in here. Came out with a one and a half inch elbow down here, 23 and a half inches. Then this will go onto the spigot of the tote on top. As you can see, we have this glued together. This is a six and a half inch piece here in the center. And when we're ready to put this together, we'll put glue on these ends and then slide it in together all at one time. So the tote on top will sit on these two by fours, these four by fours that are 22 and a half inches long, and the scrap two by four from the 10 foot two by fours we bought here will go right here and stop this from hitting the bottom of that. Because when this starts filling up, it's gonna start swelling. And this will stop the PVC from getting crushed onto that. Here, this screws right on. This is a female two inch screwed right onto here. We added a one and a half inch reducer. Came out with, again, a street elbow, although you can use a regular elbow. And then came out here with a six and a half inch piece of pipe. And so it connects everything right here. This was the last piece we put on. It just pushes right on. This way, when the water comes in, it goes from the bottom of the top one, fills in to the top of the bottom, the air can express out, and we're in good shape. Here on the top, we've come out of the cap with a two inch male connector with a one and a half inch reducer. Come to a T, the T goes down, a 48 inch piece of one and a half inch pipe, and goes into the second tote. So when this fills up with water, it'll overfill and go and fill the other one over there. This comes all the way over to the brick wall. Then we use pipe clamps on here that we will nail through the mortar. Then it comes out over here to the downspout, but before it hits the downspout, we have a one and a half inch ball valve. The reason why we have a one and a half inch ball valve is because we want to be able to shut off the water going to the totes during winter because she's going to drain it during winter since she's here in Idaho and then that'll stop the water from going to the totes. Obviously we don't have this uh, attached to the wall yet but we'll attach it as I mentioned earlier. The PVC pipe from the totes will come into here and then this is the first flush system which goes directly underneath the downspout. But anyway, so the one and a half inch pipe comes over here, and this is the first flush system. The first flush system comes up. When it fills up, it'll spill over into the totes. When the totes are full, it'll come back up into here, 
and then go over to here and this will be our downspout. So on the bottom of the first flush system we have this elbow here and on the end we have a cap. And what I do is I leave this cap loose so that it automatically drains by itself and every so many months you may want to come out here, unscrew this all the way and get out all the debris. But by putting the cap on makes it very easy to maintain. And on the overflow system this is the downspout which is the same diameter as a three inch downspout on a rain gutter. So we can handle the same amount of volume of water as if we hadn't changed out the downspout. This will replace the downspout instead of having a typical aluminum downspout. This is our spigot. We're using the handle right here to turn on and off the water. This two inch threaded female connector screwed right onto the spigot. Make sure that you test that first because some have different threading on it. This one happened to work just fine. Then we came out with a reducer that goes from two inch to three quarter and we put a brass three quarter inch hose connection on here. This has a PVC connection and a hose connection so we can hook the hose right up to here, use the spigot handle to turn it on and off. And there you go, you're all set. Make sure you check out the links below this video to save you time and money in getting all the components that you'll need to build this rain capture system. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if you are prepared, you shall not fear. And I promise you, you'll sleep much better knowing that you've got 250 or 500 or 1,000 or 2,000 gallons of water stored in case the power goes out, there's an earthquake, or something disrupts your water. And please watch the other videos in this rain capture system playlist.